Welcome to our lecture online. The concept of Bernoulli's equation can also be applied to spinning balls or rotating balls as they're used in sports and we use them in all kinds of sports. We use them in tennis and baseball. Uh, we use curve balls in soccer so we need to know how to kick the ball so we can do, make the ball do what it wants to or in ping pong or a whole variety of sports where the ball rotating makes a difference and learning how to do that properly can give you the edge. So let's say baseball. Let's say you give baseball a top spin. You have the pitcher over here throwing the ball towards the hitter and the, the pitcher gives the ball a top spin. So that's rotating in this direction clockwise from your perspective and notice that along the edge of the ball air is being pulled along by the ball because there's some viscosity in the air and so the ball rotating in the air will pull some air along it as the ball is flying to the air of course airflow goes in both directions of the ball but the net velocity at the top part will be less at the top and greater at the bottom because here you see the velocity directions are opposite and here the velocity directions are in the same direction so you'll have a faster velocity at the bottom a slower velocity at the top faster velocity means lower pressure Lower velocity means greater pressure, so we have less pressure at the bottom. So not only does gravity pull the ball down, but the difference in pressure between the top and the bottom will pull the, the ball down even more. So without that difference in pressure, that's what the ball path would look like. But strangely enough, this is what you would expect the ball to do. The ball will actually drop more quickly, and the hitter trying to hit the ball tries to predict how the ball is going to move and knowing how gravity works from experience you try to hit the ball where you think the ball is going to be but because of the top spin if you don't realize it will actually pull the ball lower and you'll miss the ball with a swing in tennis for example let's say that the player the opposite uh, on the opposite side of the court plays the ball and you want to make sure that your ball goes over the net so you give it some bottom spin now tennis balls have that little fuzz on the edge because that way the balls will pull more air along the, the edge of the ball. So as the ball is given what we call a bottom spin, so it, it rotates counterclockwise relative to your, from what, your direction, you can then see that air is being pulled along in this direction as well as in this direction at the top. Since the airflow is this way because the, the ball is moving from left to right, you can see that the total velocity at the top will be greater, the total velocity at the bottom will be smaller. Smaller velocity means greater pressure, greater velocity means lower pressure, so you have a net force due to the difference in pressure upward. So instead of expecting the ball to do this, the ball actually will go higher than you'd expect it due to the effect of gravity and that is used sometimes just to get the ball over the net, especially if the other player puts a certain spin on the ball, you want to make sure the ball doesn't drop too quick, give some bottom spin to get it over the net. So you see that by making the ball rotate, you can make the ball go higher, go lower, or if you give it a side spin, then you can make the ball move in one direction or in the other direction, depending upon the direction of the spin. And so all kinds of techniques are used to try to fool the other player. And that's a legitimate way to play the sport, by the way. It's not cheating. It's using the technique of Bernoulli's equation. And that is how it's done.